And now, Autolite and its 96,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense. Looks like she was hit with a tire iron first, then run over. Well, my name's Clade, Roy Clave. I'm deputy from over Boomerberg. I'm on the way to the courthouse on a car stealing case. <laughs> we happened to take this back road. Didn't think I'd run into anything like this. Oh. I reckon nobody would. Who is she? Her name's... Her name was... Molly Bantry. And yours? John. John Bantry. She was my wife. Your wife? Gee, that's tough, Mr. Bantry. Kids, too, I expect. Three? That's a tough break, Mr. Bantry. I reckon I could get Lily Bell to look after him. Who's Lily Bell? Lily Bell? She lives next place down the road from me. When did you find her? Ten minutes ago. Maybe a half hour, I don't know. Kind of knocked me up. Well, I'll put it down at 445. That's close enough. Now, look, Mr. Bantry, a couple things I have to ask you. It's going to sound kind of cold and calculated, but I'm a police officer and I have my duty. It's impersonal. I reckon I've been waiting for you to ask it, Deputy. Okay, Mr. Bantry. Was there anyone you could figure she was two time in your with? Got to be someone like that, or a stranger who picked her up on the road, a maniac or something. See, anybody can drive a car, Mr. Bantry, a man or a woman. Figure maybe you ought to tell me what you know, Mr. Bantry. I didn't know anything. Not anything until last night, just after supper. I was unwrapping the packages that came from the mail order house. Who'd have thought then? Not even 12 hours ago. Molly alive. Me loving her. Not even 12 hours ago. The new tires came at last, John. Uh-huh. Anything else? Anything for me? You unwrap the others, Molly. <laughs> I'll bet nobody else in the whole country's got anything like these. Eight ply tractor tread. Gonna put them on the truck tonight. <laughs> Expensive, maybe, but fellas gotta be smart. Get something guaranteed 50,000 miles. I reckon you're pretty smart, John. Sure am, honey. I got you. How long do you reckon I'm guaranteed for? Till death do us part. Oh. Yeah, three pairs just alike. One for each of the kids and no quarrels. You like them? Yeah. What's this? This for me? No. Just something private, that's all. So what is he for me? You got a big secret, huh, John? Oh, I may as well go on in and finish my fishing. Don't mind if I settle here a minute or two before going the rest of the way home, do you? Sure not, Lily Bell. You and Molly been quarreling? Molly and I never quarrel. I told you that before. Not even about me? Why don't you sit down and relax? Oh, oh, look. 
look at those, will you? My last pair of nylons. Oh, Johnny, isn't that a crying shame? Look okay to me. Do they? I was talking about the hose. So you and Molly don't quarrel. Must be that you don't care enough about me. Lily Bell, if anyone ever heard you talk... Well, it could be because you're so crazy about Molly that you're just plumb blind to what's going on right under your eyes. You just got an evil mind, that's all. Whoever says I didn't. And remember, if you ever wake up, I'm always right here. I'll remember. Molly always had a hankering for some nylons. I guess I wanted to surprise her by hiding them away in her top drawer just so I could see her face light up the way it does. The way it used to, I mean. What are you doing in my drawer? Molly, where'd you ever get things like this? I never thought you'd spy on me, John. Where'd they come from? I've been saving out of my grocery money. Well, can I help it if you don't buy pretty things for me? I guess I got a right to them just the same as the next woman. Sure you have, but I... Oh, I was meaning to tell you about it. Molly, you know I don't give a hang what you do with your food money. Oh, that's mighty nice of you. Where are you going now? In town. To the library. You can put the kids to bed. Oh, Molly. Stay home tonight. Tomorrow's your birthday. Besides, you've been to the library twice this week already. I guess I have a right, haven't I, to do some of the things that I want to do? Oh, upset as I am tonight, I, I wouldn't be decent company anyway. Come on. I'll, uh, I'll be back by 11. Sake. It's after midnight and you're walking out in the road alone. Get out of here. Okay, don't get hard nosed. But she's your wife, mister. Keep her inside. Get out fast. I'm shaking all over. Women's not safe with men like that one and around little Bobby. But I guess it was worth it. Philadelphia, what are you doing walking out this time of night? Just walking, watching for Molly to come home. Where is she, little girl? Do you know? I don't know where she is or who she's with, but I've known for a long time what she's been up to. Oh, sometimes when I think of her doing that, Lily Bell. I could... Go inside and wait with the kids. So you did wake up, Johnny, and about time. There's a new pair of nylons for your trouble. You don't have to pay me or a bribe me, do you know that? Johnny, what are you going to do when you find her? I don't know. I just don't know. And now, act two of The Murder. My own wife and I don't even care. After what I found out last night, I, I don't care. It appears to me, Mr. Bantry, if I was to make up my mind on that alone, I'd say maybe your wife wasn't stepping out with anyone after all. Lily Bell didn't have no cause to lie to me. Well, maybe Lily Bell just did. What do you mean by that? Well, I have a hunch, Mr. Bantry, that Lily Bell got her cap set for you. And a woman in love, she ain't too scrupulous as to how she gets rid of the other woman. 
Maybe Lily Bell got you to think it just the way she wanted you to think. Lily Bell wasn't lying. Don't get excited, Mr. Bantry. I'm just putting things together and making a guess. Maybe your wife did go to the library after all, innocent as you please. No. I ain't told you what happened after I left Lily Bell and went into town last night. Okay, suppose you tell me on the way. I'll take you back into town now. Only place in town open was the Waldorf all-night lunch wagon on the square across from the library. Everything else was all dark and shut up. Give me another cup, Mac. You don't need it. You got coffee nerves already. What's the matter with you tonight, Frank? You didn't see any ghosts? Are you hauling a dead body around that truck of yours? Okay, okay, so you're a funny guy. Now have another cup of jabber, huh? <laughs> Nobody can have any fun anymore. Well, here's the guy that can laugh sometimes. Oh, Bantry, what are you doing up this late? Hey, Mac, I want to ask you something. Hey, Frank, Clive will get you a 20 that you can't spell this guy's name right the first time. Just remember, it's a Scotch name like mine. See, McLeod? Sounds like Cloud, but it's spelled M-A-C-L-E-O-D. Well, here's his Bantry. Go on, spell it. Pantry. It sounds like pantry. I ain't no gambler, Max. Well, get this for free. It sounds like pantry. It's spelled B-A-N-T-R-E-A-G-H. <laughs> you lost your fin, Frank. Nobody can do it right off. Max! Is anybody in his ear for tonight? Mac, what time's the library close? The library? What are you, a scholar now? What time, Max? Same as every night, 5 o'clock. Every night? It's never open at night. Max. Looking for a, a lady, a woman. Who ain't? That's all Frank you're ever does. Ain't that right, Frank? She got a blue and white dress with a red leather belt, black shoes with high heels, plucked eyebrows, and a red mouth. Very red. She's about 29. Sounds delicious. No, not tonight. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, sure, I know the dame you mean. Yeah, she comes in two or three times a week between 10 and 11. She gets sandwiches and things like that. Takes them out to her boyfriend in the car of theirs. He never comes in, though. He stays across the street in the dark. It's cagey. What kind of car? Oh, a black sedan. Well, I can make out from here. She... They been around tonight? No. What are you looking for her for, Bantley? She looks like, uh, trouble to me. Shut up. She's my wife. Company's uh, sweet, Frank, especially the nice, but, uh, you know. Hey, listen. That, uh, that lady we've been discussing, that couldn't be the same one that you were telling me about, could down on Jaybird Road? No, 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 no. <laughs> Frank, you're getting to know them all in time. Yeah, I remember. I saw Frank early tonight, right in front of my house. Ah, uh, you got the wrong guy, mister. What do you tell you, Mac? Go on, go on, tell him, tell him, uh, the Frank. He's got a right to know it's his own wife. I've done nothing, Mac. Maybe not even the same day. That's a stalling. Okay. So you want to know? I seen this dame sitting up there on the abutment to the Swamp Run Bridge. I seen her lots of times on my run. She always sits there like she's kind of waiting for somebody. Oh, it was, uh, I don't know, 8.30, just after dark tonight. There she was. That's all. That's not all, though, is it, Mike? Go on, go on, tell him, Frank. He deserves to know. But if it's his wife, if it's this guy's wife... Come on, let's have it! Wait, now, Mike, there's no cause to get tough about it, you know. Well, I almost ran out of gas tonight, and I was coasting, see? Not making much noise, and I guess this dame didn't hear me. She was sitting there all right, with her legs all stretched out, and she was tightening up her garters and to some black lace thing she had on or something. Well, I'm only human, so I stomped in the brakes and jumped out. You make a habit of such things, don't you? Now, look, I don't know no more about it than that. And just as I hit the ground, I started over for her. A black sedan came up and stopped, and a big guy climbed out of it and started over for her. Well, she waved at him and smiled, and but this big guy kept his eyes on me, so I jumped back in the cab and made myself scared. That's all, pal. I don't know nothing about your wife, except maybe I guess you ought to keep her home. I don't see what you're getting so worked up about. The last time I seen you, you was hugging and kissing that pretty dame right out in front of your own house. She ain't the one you're calling your wife now. 
Is she? <laughs> well, I know what I'd do if it was my wife. I'd do it fast. I wouldn't even try to cover it up because nobody would blame me. I wonder nobody has any fun anymore. Oh, where did I tell my wife about this? Hey. I wonder if Lola's home. I think I'll just make a little telephone call to say hello. After a while, I stopped back at the diner, and Mac told me she'd been there. He said he told her I'd been looking for her, and she beat it. I started back to the house. Well, I might have known you'd be around here someplace. You see, Johnny? I'm making darn sure I don't see John ever again. He told me down at the diner he's looking all over for me. I'm not taking any chance. Where are you going? Away for good before that crazy husband of mine catches up with me. I reckon that'll be just dandy with you. Not as dandy as if he phoned you. He might, yes. He might be here any second. How do you know he's not already here? You're trying to scare me. You don't deserve to get off so I don't me. deserve. What about you? You've been making a play for John ever since you moved in here. Ever since I saw what you are. You and John have been having your fun, all right. Well, you can have him in good riddance. You're not getting away. What do you think you're doing? Johnny will be here any second now. Get away from that door. I want you to be here when he comes in. I want to see what he'll do to Are you. Are you crazy? Let me You're out. Turn out and wait for Johnny. You want to see him kill me? You can't get off stop free. You'll be here as soon as he I'm finds out. I'm you, Lily Bell. You won't get off so easy. You can't stop me. I'll stop you. in the truck and started out again. But I remembered what the truck driver said about the Swamp Run Bridge. So I drove down the back road. I saw something white looking out in the meadow. I drove in and found her. I don't rightly expect you to believe me. Why shouldn't I believe you? What kind of a car did they say the boyfriend was driving? Mac didn't know. Just a black sedan. Nine cars out of ten are black sedans. He's just been riding one. What'd you bring me here for? What do you think I was going to do, Bantry? Take you to the courthouse? I reckon I did. Now, now, here's my report if you want to read it. Now, I got it figured out the boyfriend did it. Pretty cagey guy. Making sure he's never seen with her. What do you have to kill her for? I have an idea he had no idea of making it permanent. Since she ran away and he, well, he was stuck with her for good. So he hit her with a tire on her. First thing else was handy. Then pulled her out of the car and run the car up over her. Or to make it look accidental. Maybe he hit her too hard. Then he pulled her out and left her there for someone else to find. Then he went home, took a bath maybe, shaved. Slept a while. What about Frank, that truck driver? I doubt it. I doubt it. Molly Bantry. This is John Bantry. Residence near Jeffersonville. Stuck on the back of his head and run onto by car's front wheel. Body found by husband. Kind of slow fella, I reckon. Kind of stunned tonight, so my mind ain't clicking the way it should. All along, I've been almost sure that truck driver had something to do with it. Why don't you think so? Well, listen, I told you. He's a chaser. He's got a reputation. Could be dangerous, maybe crazy. What are you driving at, Bantry? Nothing. I'm just thinking. I'd say Frank could have done it. Or Lily Bell. You said yourself a woman can drive a truck, and Lily Bell sure hated her. Or me, her husband, caught red-handed beside the body with a possible weapon in my hand, and all the reason in the world tonight. Look, is this a confession, Bantry? Is that why you've been waiting, deputy, for a confession? Those were my new tire tracks in the field. And I told you just tonight I gave nylons to another woman and was seen holding her in my arms. Look, man, you're hanging yourself on the spot. Listen, the way I talked wild in the diner, in front of witnesses, threatening to do it. Okay, Bantry, you're under arrest right now. Get back, Deputy. Get back, Deputy. Turn around. Get back. 
Get your hands away from your body. Oh, you won't get away with this, Pantry. Why didn't you arrest me earlier, Clay? Why didn't you arrest me earlier? My best friends would have suspicioned me. If you'd have just asked me just once, I might have caved in. But you didn't. Because you knew I hadn't killed Molly. And you knew Frank hadn't. There's only one man in the world who could know that for sure, Clay. The man who did it himself. You're going crazy, man. She told me he'll kill her just before she died. Get alert! Didn't think anything of the crack he's been dead since three o'clock. I'm not hanging myself here, Clay. You are. Don't try anything fancy. I want to get these loose. Now stick out your arms. Straight out. You're too smart, Clay. Like spelling my name right. That's what set me to thinking clear. Nobody spells my name right, Clay, unless they know me. Or my wife. Nobody's going to believe you're against me, Bantry. I know that, but she must have made other mistakes, too. You said she was hit with a tire iron. Where is it? Hold still, Clay! In the tool kit, I reckon. There'll be blood on it. Most likely you got blood on your shirt and your suit last night, too, before you went home and slept. You said it yourself. You slept while Molly was lying out there and I was driving around going, Listen, man, 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 listen, on your feet, Clay. Start moving. Keep moving. I'm taking you, the sheriff, in your little black sedan. Our story of suspense will be Black Passage, starring William Prince. Also, be sure to listen to Suspense every Thursday night on your radio.